Shimrandanko Supre Hibas Kabaya. O Relembari Kasoba, eight a Kelebre into Gosabai. Shamrunda Mandos Kopala Kedo Sevele Lembranoska. Kirana Bosa Panda Kriananos Kopela da Vare da Dosa. Elana Mando Sopala Te Karadabasha Kaporianazo. Sabron de la de Capande Prene de Bosha da Kapaya. E rebonda la da capande rebonza te che la de bonsha ta cabaya. E le le bonra bade de cala baba 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 basumbra da da cabaya. E rabonda scombre de menda la da bash cabaya. E rababa baba baba bashanda la bere che tonda bala keida. E i sole brede de mendo. I campario se te le manda la caia. Gembre de le mando scopa la keido se le mante le gana. E la bande le che rebosha da la bande le che rebosa taie. E la baia, la baia, la baia. E le bora la bale, cavale le carale. Jarale a la boca, la baia, la baia. E la la baia, la boca, la be.
Worship the Lord with a new song. Let a praise be lifted. The God who the one who makes a way for us. Lift up to pray. Lift up your voice. Pray.
alone, Jesus, paid the ultimate price. You alone, Jesus, gave your life. You alone, Jesus, did what no one in heaven and on earth was able to do. And you, Jesus, you presented your blood before the Father, and it was as the perfect sacrifice. As you humbled yourself in obedience, even to a death upon the cross, how God highly exalted you and has given you a name that is above every other name. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, all knees in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth bows to the name of Jesus. You alone are worthy. You alone are king. Yes. Bowing down before you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity and the honor to worship in your presence. Grateful, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen, amen, amen. Those of you at the back, please come forward. Um, maybe put your chairs in front here. You know, but don't sit at the back. Sister Pedro, it's so good to see you. Move forward. Let's not be at the back. Ah, Moya brings. This is how we do it now. <laughs> yeah, Linda, do you want to come forward a bit so that some people can shuffle? Oh, uh, can you help down? Yeah. So we can have an extra row over there instead of people sitting at the back where we can't see you. Hello, online family. Where is everybody? If you guys are with me, come on. Where's everyone? Hello, hello. Yes, access. Hi. 
Hi. <laughs> oh, Kachi, I need this camera back on. Oh, okay, they can see me. Hi. <laughs> I am going to miss you guys. <laughs> you have not left me, eh? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. It's the glory of God. <laughs> oh, guys, look, I am having, um, I don't know what it is. I'm struggling. Yes, Access University graduation night, right? <laughs> It was, it's a whole university that, I mean, it's been so powerful. Even I, like, I'm the one teaching, but I have been so blessed. The Holy Spirit, and you guys, you rock. Like, you've maintained your numbers from day one. He said, P.I. wants to gossip this evening. And then I saw your face and kept quiet. Oh, you were going to gossip and you saw my face, eh? How I talk about gossip, we close your doors. You want to seal your access. Conversations are the things that pull you into realms. Eh? And then you quickly changed your words. Let's keep going, Candice. We cannot keep going. <laughs> Sometimes it needs to end. Pastor Stephanie, you're not ready to say goodbye. <laughs> I'm not ready to say goodbye either. Me, no, here's a physical meeting good day tonight. Solomon, don't be angry. It's just the leaders in POI that are here, you know, and uh, guys, you know how, where's Kachi? Kachi, I am, it's muffled. I feel like there's a serious echo in my mic. Yeah, so I'm struggling, but I don't know if everybody can hear me clearly, if those on Zoom can hear me clearly. Sorry? It's clear on Zoom. So it's this, so it's this speaker that is a problem. Okay, <laughs> Queen says so surreal, right? I feel like we've just been in this camp together, summer camp or holiday house or something, and now we have to all say goodbye to each other, you know. Um, it's because we've all been dining on the same table for 14 sessions. Please celebrate yourselves. 14, 14 sessions in seven days, back to back. Uh -uh. You people are too much, you know. <laughs> Caroline, you have mixed feelings, <laughs> you know. And yeah, okay. So they are doing nations. So we are saying Canada here, Jamaica in the building. Okay, let's go, let's go. You want to do your nations? Let's do it. Who else is here? Canada, Jamaica, eh? Gobuang, where are you from? <laughs> who else? Who else is here? Royal School, <laughs> lovely retreat. Oh, they said there's a background noise. Oh, okay. I think I'm not, ah, man, I'm not moving as fast as the charts. Sorry, South Africa, London, Norway. Hey, Sarah, you're from Norway, Ghana, my people, USA, Kenya. Okay, Kaduna, hallelujah, Florida, Uganda. Uganda, you know I'm coming to you. Um, Ethiopia, hey, oh, this PDK, you're from Ethiopia, Botswana, hi, South Africa, Zimbabwe, hello guys, Scotland, hello, Lagos, some people by force, by fire, their states have become um, countries, Texas, Barbados, uh -uh. are you sure that's not where I will come for my birthday celebration? Uh, Somebody say Ocean Nation is here. Fantastic. I'm happy for you. Uh, Osamu Diame, you are still here. You've not gotten married. <laughs> you are still here, single, since yesterday. Chile. Is that how to pronounce it? Or Ch Ch yeah, Chile, you are here. Ijebo Ode, representing. Hallelujah. You're welcome. <laughs> Influence Hub is here. <laughs> Scotland, Guyana. Hey guys, Zambia, hi. Nashville, Tennessee, hello. All right, okay. <laughs> Oguta, <laughs> you're welcome. Switzerland, you're welcome. <laughs> Osamu Diame, some people are saying they need to see your face because we can't, we need closure before we end. Does anybody else want to see Osamu Diame's face? Yes. <laughs> Everybody 
he says yes. <laughs> also, brother man, you shot. I mean, you shot your shots, so you have to follow through. Go and rub powder if you need to rub powder. <laughs> so you want to see? Everybody needs to see your face. So do whatever you can. You ask for it. So we are here to help your market. Osamu diame. Oezeni ofeye mume. Josu no jemu diami ogo. Oya mu dianoria oye de. Oye de, oye de. Ano se mu diana oye de. Oye de, oye de. Ano se mu de. Oi de, oi de, ano se mudia na oi de, oi de, oi de, ano se mudia na oi de. We must all admit that se mudia me is one of the highlights of this of this prayer ring. Also, I mean, we need you to have access, okay? Where is he? He has still not. Am I the one that is not seeing him? He's catchy. <laughs> okay, also, I mean, so come tomorrow. I've told you, come and see me tomorrow, okay? Influence Hub. Where is he? I'm not seeing him, man. Where is he? Also, I mean, Has arrived. Oh, same with your man. So come tomorrow. Let's discuss the modalities um, concerning your future. Somebody has offered to do makeup. Another person has given jewelry. Somebody has given ring. Uh -huh. God bless you. So wait. At the barber shop. You're at the barber shop. Get ready for tomorrow. Singles mingles. With Rabbi Alan. Hallelujah. Catch it on the camera. Access crew, we have a surprise for you. We ha okay, well, it's not a surprise. You knew he was coming. But Rabbi Alan Oman is in the house. Come on. All the way from the United States of America. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Access University is complete. We have an island in the house. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> okay, guys. So precious. So precious. Thank you um, for coming, Rabbi. I'm so grateful to have you. And I'll be sharing some, I'll be shining. So when I'm talking to them, I'm like, you know, because in the original Hebrew text, what is written is the beingness of the being of God. You know, I don't know if you've heard of this word mahe before. You know, and the word tov, you know. So, <laughs> I've been shining. Please don't teach anything you've taught me, okay? Don't take my glory from me. <laughs> so, um, if I have taught anything wrongly, this is the time you'll find out. So, my teacher is in the house and I am really excited. I'm really honored that he made this trip to be with us. Um, the next couple of days is just going to seal up everything we've been doing. So you don't need to end this journey at all. Um, tomorrow, I think the singles meeting is at 6 p.m., right? So 6 p.m., we have 25 people in the room. If you've still not registered, please, Pastor Linda, somebody put up the link for the singles to register, you know, um, and be here tomorrow. Um, just come in, and if you come and there's no space, stand behind, you know, bring your blanket when you're coming. Let's sit on the floor and ask all the questions you want to ask. Yes, it will be streamed so that you can join us from wherever you are, um, those of you abroad. But there are some things, remember, you need to be in the room. You need to be in the room um, if you can. So 
and a Saturday sacred parenting. You know, yes, Sister Pedro, the head of Children of Influence Ministry is here. So on Saturday, we as parents, we're going to be in the room learning what it means um, to raise our children in a sacred way. What was God's original intent um, for us when he gave us seed? And what does it mean to have seed? And how do you train up a child in the way that he should go? I'm sure, I'm sure that dad has a revelation there on that scripture about train up the child in the way he should go. You know, so let's, let's come and learn some deep truths. If you are a parent, make sure you don't miss Saturday morning. It's 11 a.m. Saturday morning. I know Ecclesia Hills on Saturday at 7 a.m. They're having a Bible study. In fact, the name of their meeting of Bible study is how to study the Bible. So Rabbi Allen will be teaching you how to study the Bible at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning. And it is at um, the Hill Center. Yes. Somebody please put up the address to the Hill Center so that people can be there, those who can be there physically. And the Hill Center from the Influence Hub is just five minutes. So after you go to the Hill Center, and you learn how to study the Bible at 7 a.m., you just come straight to the Influence Hub, <laughs> and you learn how to parent um, in a sacred way. So it's just five minutes apart. Yes, we would ask Pastor Mo if he can stream for people who want to join. We're going to speak with Pastor Moses, and I'm sure Pastor Moses is very benevolent, so I'm sure he will stream for those people who can't be there. So Pastor Uche has just put up the address. So that's the address, um, number three, Remy Oluwode Close, uh, Marwa Junction. So take that address that Uche and Ajemba just put up. That's the address for the Influence Center. There are some people that are so hungry, like they've called me privately. You know, they've sent me bribery, gifts, all kinds of things. P.I., I, I want to be in any room, you know. So, and you know, a man's gift will make way for him. <laughs> so... <laughs> There are some people here that are in everything that we are doing this period. You know, let's not call it bribery. Let's just say access. access. You understand? <laughs> they understand the language of access. So they've just told me, P.I., just hold something there. Just a little something for you to just um, yes, take care of things this season. Some people have used dry fish and stockfish. Some people have used pears and apples. Some have used perfumes and notebooks. So my question is, where is your sacrifice? <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the point where you put up a picture of Kanayo, Kanayo. It is all about sacrifice. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. All right, guys. If we do this, we are going to enter another time when we don't do anything else on this call. So let us um, just, just touch on something real quickly. And then I'm going to bring up Rabbi Alan, and I'm just going to let him flow. Whatever the Lord lays on his heart, he's just going to pour into us um, whatever God tells him. I have to remove this comment session so I can concentrate. <laughs> Where is your sacrifice? Because moreover, that's how moreover dealt with us this morning. Like, what is that? What is the meaning of moreover? Anyway, so um, we... So real quickly, let me see if I can remember everything we've learned in the past seven days. So track with me, guys, and tell me if I missed anything. So I think we began with, ah, there are some scholars here. Oh, where are my Access Scholars, Access University gra graduates? Please help, help your dean. I can't even find, hey, Jehovah Shama. All right. So I think we began, I spoke about what to expect in this season, um, what the different gates that God wants us to touch on. We ended up not speaking about any gate in particular. Um, I was thinking about touching on the possessing economic gates today, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to learn about Alan teachers. We can take specific gates next month, right? We'll just know that we've laid the foundation with this month, and next month we're going into details. Um, so we learned about eight components that allow for effective gates, managing your gates effectively. Yes, but before we got there, I began by teaching about the different realms, the physical realm and the spirit realm. And I taught you about the different layers in the physical realm. And I taught you about the layers in the realm of the spirit. I taught you about in the, in the, in the realm of the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven, and then the layers of 
the kingdom of darkness. Uh, maybe next month I'll teach you about the different layers in the kingdom of darkness. And you know how some people say there is hell or oh, lake of fire. You are rebuking demons. You are like, I cast you into the lake of fire. You cannot cast anything into the lake of fire because the lake of fire does not quite, is not opened yet for business. So it is after the millennial reign of Christ that Jesus will cast hell, death, um, the Antichrist and Satan himself and all their agents into the lake of fire. So the lake of fire is not, you can't cast a demon into the lake of fire right now. You don't have the right to do that at this moment. Um, so we talked about the different realms of the spirit. Um, I talked about things, operating systems in the spirit realm. Remember, when we talked about the diff we talked about kingdoms, rulers, thrones, legalities, administration, armies, families, citizens, culture, domains, wars, value systems, economy, um, communication system, worship cultures. Remember, are my graduates still with me? Um, okay, so we talked about, I think, the four ways by which you can connect um, access to our lives and then we talked about I think it's the, the four data points um, that enables you to connect access to your daily life and that's where we looked at things like the spirit realm is an ancient realm so we talked about the ancientness of the of the spirit realm and how it is a realm where information is held uh, where that has a lot of data that has history uh, we talked about the, the spirit realm always seeking to partner with humanity. You know, we talked about a clear path of connection. Uh, yeah. And then we looked at Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus was talking about, uh, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And we looked at the power of revelation as the first key to access. And how Peter, in being able to connect to revelation about who Jesus is, it became the very first point by which Peter was able to access, you know, the power of heaven. And we talked about how when a man on earth moves, how the heavens move um, in correlation to your faith. And that's what we're looking about. Whatsoever things you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever things you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And we're talking about how the earth is the first point of control because we are the custodians of the earth. So we looked at that connection. Um, we looked at access ways described in the Bible, and then we entered the eight spiritual components that make up an effective gate system. So we then began, uh, when we're looking at it, I think, so what's the first spiritual component? A gatekeeper. Yes, we looked at gatekeepers, what it means to be a gatekeeper, what it means to have a gatekeeper. Um, and then, and we talked about different peop, um, things that are observed in the Bible. We talked about the Prince of Persia over Babylon. We looked at the angel that was standing between, I think, Gilgal and Jericho. Um, we looked at cherubims that were put at the Garden of Eden. Uh, we even looked at a very strange gatekeeper, Rahab. And I was explaining to you how she had the power to be a gatekeeper in Jericho. And we talked about the walls of Jericho and the demonic significance of those walls and why they had to crush. Uh, crash rather. We looked at Pharaoh being a gatekeeper over Egypt, you know, and how we being gatekeepers, the significance of being gatekeepers over territories and regions that God has given to us. Um, we looked at the different things about gatekeepers. They are guardians of security. Um, they are maintainer, maintainers of order. Um, they, they keep, um, they play a symbolic role. Um, then we looked at the second component of an effective gate system, which is altars. I loved altars. We talked about altars, how to build altars, how to raise altars, and I taught you the eight functions of altars. You know, altars are places where humanity meets with spirits. Um, they are places of sacrifice, places of covenants, places of worship. Um, they are places where people have dreams and visions. Altars change the destinies of people, families, communities, and groups. Um, altars uh, to summon deities. So we talked about, you know, the purpose of altars. And then we also look at, I told you some other principles of altars. When I was talking to you about there's a specificity about the instructions on how to build the altar, there's a reward of the altar, and all of that, you know. Then we looked at the story of David when there was a famine in the land, 
And when, because of the covenant that Joshua had made 300 years before with the Gibeonites, and how David had to kill seven sons or give hand over seven sons of Saul um, to be killed by the Gibeonites so that rain would be restored to the land because they couldn't, Saul had broken a covenant that Joshua made 300 years before with the Gibeonites. And I said to you that there are some farmings you get into as an individual that has nothing to do with what you've done or what you've done like right in your own life. It has everything to do with something that somebody else in your lineage agreed upon 300 years before. So that's why consistently when we find ourselves at junctions in our lives where we are like, what do I do? What's going on? We have to be able to access the grace and liberty of God through the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus is able to travel through time, is able to travel through realms, and is able to meet us at our point of need. Because we don't have all of history on our side, but the blood of Jesus has history. So the blood of Jesus can infiltrate the past so that in our present we can work in liberty. So we looked at you know, the power of altars, and we also, covenants rather, and we talked about how David um, could not kill, did not hand over Mephibosheth because Me David made a covenant with Jonathan, Mephibosheth's father. So even though he had to hand over people from the lineage of Saul, his own covenant with Jonathan stopped him from handing over Jonathan's son. So you see the superiority of covenants and how one covenant cancels out another covenant. I don't know if you understand what we're talking about. And so we began to talk about covenants we've made with God Okay, so that's still on the altars. You know, covenant was made with God and all of that. Then the third spiritual component that ensures an effective gate system is your priesthood. So we began to look at our priesthood. Um, who were the priests, you know? Um, what is required of you in your priesthood? Uh, we talked about the priests who speaking about medi med the priests were mediators between God and the people. They played intercessory roles, teaching and guidance, maintaining spiritual rituals, offering of spiritual sacrifices. Uh, when we talked about spiritual rituals, we spent some time on rituals. And I began to explain to you the power of culture in either empowering the spirit realm or disempowering you and how the different cultures of your life you know becomes the sum total of the power of god that can work within your life and how as a priest you cannot take for granted your daily cultures your daily rituals and how rituals are not just the things you do but the gates that open up spirits to your life you know and how the the lord had um, very clear court instructions concerning the rituals of the priests. So when we talked about the priests, we also talked about, you know, how the priest dresses. And, you know, that's how we talked about certain kinds of clothes, you know, and your priesthood. And how as a woman, don't wear the clothes that they can see your kidney because of how tight your dress is. We can just see the x-ray of your heart beating, you know. So we address certain matters when we're talking about our priesthood. We talked about the sound of the priest. You know, what sound comes out, you know, we talked about the different protocols, the burning, the offering up of incense in worship, and how God was very particular about all of these things, how a priest must be learned, and how the strength of your priesthood is the strength of your altar, and the strength of your altar is the strength of your access, you know. So we looked at the connection between all of this. I'm rushing, I'm trying to uh, put together everything we've learned in 14 sessions, I'm trying to put it into one session. You know, and we looked at Jesus, our great high priest. The number fourth spiritual component, we talked about sacrifices. And this one left a lot of people repentant. You know, I even felt so burdened when I finished. I was like, oh, you know, we just all felt like, are we doing enough? Are we giving enough? And we began to talk about the power of your sacrifice, you know, and how we look back at people like Cain and Abel. And how down to even like the first murder or the gates that opened that first act of violence started from a sacrifice, you know, and how sometimes, you know, what you're laying on the table is very vital and how your sacrifice can get you into doors. And we were talking about, and I don't know if I shared a bit about Cain and the state of his heart and not even as opposed to getting angry with Abel. How about going back to God and saying, God, what did I do wrong? I think I touched on it a little, and I said it was Nathan that was telling me, you know, the gates that Cain opened the gate of pride, you know, and the gate of murder, and the gate of unrepentance, you know, and we talked about how it led to a vagabond spirit, 
you know, and how people have a vagabond spirit, never stable, always here and there, moving around, and how it takes God actually just putting a mark on you so that you, you can have mercy in this life, you know. And so we, we looked at that, um, sacrifice, atonement for sins, expression of devotion and gratitude, foreshadowing of Christ, you know. Then number five, we looked at covenants. It was a very interesting topic when we talked about covenants, responsibilities, commitments, promises and blessings, and all of that. Then the sixth one was food, you know, maintaining an effective gay system. And we went in there when we really talked about food. You know, we talked about the food, you know, and we talked about when you sit to dine at a table with kings and put a knife to your throat. And you remember we talked about the behavior of royalty. And how the Bible says that after Samuel anointed Saul before the people, Samuel then taught them the behavior of royalty. And we took time, and I taught you for days, the behavior of royalty, the behavior of royalty. There are things that royals don't do. There are things that royals don't say. There are ways that royals don't behave. And we talked about how do royals eat. You know, how royals don't rush to the table. You just want to eat, take, 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 take everything. But how royals are very, very stable. Royals are patient. And how a king um, attends to all the rituals before the food you know, pronounces the blessing, understands the role of the priest, you know. So we looked at the behavior of royalty and how, we're, as we're talking about access, because access is going to put us before people that we didn't expect to be before. You know, today I got a message about my trip to Uganda and they said, oh, someone said to me, oh, PI, we just got a message from the state house in Uganda and they said they want to be the ones to pick you up. As soon as they pick you up, they're going to take you to the, the hotel. They're going to be the ones to do it. I'm like, why was they, I have my, they're like, no, they say, it's coming from the president's office. They I said, Jesus, may they not catch me for Uganda, you know. But at the end of the day, I understood what was going on. And I said, there are certain messages you preach. You have to be ready for the effect of it, you know. And so just a thing of, oh, I'm going to survey the land turns into, you know, we want to be the ones to pick you up, take you, do your test bring you later in the evening for our meeting, you know, and all of that. And, but to be able to attend to the promotion that access will bring to you, remember that scripture, if you're a man given to appetite, when you sit before kings to dine, put a knife to your throat. So you don't go to a king's palace, oh, can I get this, can I get this, I want this, oh, what about this, what about this? You, 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 you curb your appetite, you know, because kings can differentiate royals from peasants by the way they eat. And kings don't cut contracts and covenants with peasants. They cut covenants with fellow kings. You know, so your appetite betrays you and exposes you. So you have to learn to curb it at every point in time. You know, so we, we, we really sat on the behavior of royalty um, and access. We looked at food, and I think it was under food that we talked about mar mare, mare. And I taught you guys about Eve seeing the fruit. I taught you about Moses seeing the bush that was burning and was not consumed. And then we went to Uncle Davido. Hallelujah. Him and Bathsheba. You know. Rabbi, am I, am I doing well, sir? I'm tracking it. Are you proud? Are you proud of me? Very. Fantastic. <laughs> so. No, no, no. We need you. We need you to bless us tonight. Uh, so we went to David um, in, um, with Bathsheba and how I believe that he did not just see a naked woman because Mare is much more than seeing the obvious, but seeing you know, what is past all of that and what can potentially come out of it. You know, so, and then we looked at the effect of not curbing what you see or stretching your hand to take what you see and the effect of that. And we looked at the effect on David's lineage, you know, and all of that, and how there's always a price to pay for moving ahead of God. Um, and then we looked at tokens. You know, somebody today sent me um, a testimony on behalf of their friend and said, Pia, if my friend is procrastinating, I'm sharing this testimony on behalf of my friend. I was like, okay, great. And sent me pictures of the porcelain doll, the blue-white porcelain doll, that we were talking about yesterday, we were talking about tokens, and how the person said, yeah, in there, this is the door Pia is talking about in my house. So, <laughs> and the other one was like, ah, why do you have it? In fact, the chat cracked me up. Why do you have it? The other one said, I just like it. Please unlike it. 
<laughs> and you know, and how the, the lady went and took the doll and broke it, you know. So the friend said, ah, ah, why did you have to break it on top of a red cloth? You know, so for some major blood of Jesus effect, you know, broke the door. And she said how at night she saw a man running out of her house with something tied on her, his head and running out, you know. And she just knows that she was able to shut the door of access to a spirit that probably was using the token as an access way to her life. You know, so we talked about tokens, we talked about different things and, you know, we talked about the, the gods of Rachel's father's house and how Rachel stole the gods of Laban's house and how in the spirit it became like a spiritual tracking device that made it possible for Laban to catch up with Jacob and how sometimes it's not just about you making sure there are no tokens but the people with you must also not carry tokens from strange gods with them and how we can expose you in the spirit realm. I remember we looked at that scripture when God made a covenant with Abraham and said to Abraham, I will bless you and everyone that is with you and all the creatures that are in your house that are with you. You know, and I shared the testimony about how when I got pregnant, everything in my house started getting pregnant. The bed that was laying egg by my window got pregnant. Somebody is rubbing her nose. Another person that got pregnant in my house, you know, and I warned her. I said, see, Something is spreading. Don't carry belé. And of course, I taught you guys the difference between carry belé and get belé. Hallelujah. Amen. So, my dog got pregnant. You know, um, everything was getting pregnant because God says the covenant is not just to you, but to everyone with you and to all the creatures, you know, in your house. Um, so, and how it's important to make sure that everyone with you um, is not carrying a token that exposes you um, and becomes an open door in the realm of the spirit. And of course, we looked at names. Number eight, we looked at names. Jama, <laughs> you dodged that one, eh? <laughs> That's the best friend of my best friend, you know? So my best friend that has a best friend. So, um, because in this life, you have to be sure. If you say someone is your best friend, but are you their best friend? You understand? These are two different things. Uh -huh. So, uh, <laughs> Abraham, we looked at names and how Abraham named um, <laughs> friend in law. <laughs> okay, IJ, you said this before the saints and congregation of God. You know, everybody, please screenshot that chat. Ijoma Wakuche, before God's people said, You are my best friend. Hallelujah. So when I ask you to give me back my sunglasses and my scarf, I say, best friend, do your best to return all my items. Hallelujah. Amen. So um, <laughs> we looked at names <laughs> and the power of names and how names are access ways and how names are doors. And we looked at the names of God and the power of the names of God. And how the names of God just evoke the presence of his throne. And we're talking about different names and how different names give you access to different places. So we then said, what is your name? What is your name? What are you named by in the realm of the spirit? And we know that, um, remember Paul, I know, you know, Peter, Jesus, I know, who are you? You know, what name do you carry? Do you have a name? And remember the dream I shared with you guys um, about the, 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 the gatekeeper over Amadio has altar. Shouting, Amadio, uh, shouting, Amadio, Amadio, are you going to let her go? Are you going to let her disgrace us? You know, cash money. Are you going to and how catch? Catch, I'm depending on you, help me. You know, and um, how when they were trying to strike me with thunder, with lightning. Is it lightning or thunder? With thunder. So there was lightning, darkness, and all of that. And there was a halo around me, and it was trying to strike my head. And Amadio has speaking back to his high priest in that dream, saying, how could you send us against the great one? We cannot strike the great one. Because every time we try to strike her head, we see her face 
changes to the face of the great one. And how I saw it in the dream, it was like, you see my face, you see the face of Jesus, you see my face, you see the face of my Jesus. And Amadio has said, we cannot strike the great one. And so the man said, if you cannot strike her head, strike her feet. And then they started trying again to strike my feet. And every time the um, thunder will come, it will bounce back again. And then Amadio has said again to the man, how can you tell us to strike her feet? We cannot strike her feet because every time we try to strike her feet, we see the feet of the one who has a hole in it. And he says, and that is the feet of the great one. You know? So, um, yes, Kachi's account number. So, Kachi, do you please help us put up your account number? Um, hallelujah. Amen. So, let's bless Kachi. Kachi, don't leave us. So, when you send it, let the description of what you send be, don't leave us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So, Pastor Linda Kawiga Kachi's account number, he's been such a blessing. And, of course, we also want to bless Minister Victor. Praise God. Yeah. Minister Victor is always, always such a blessing. Victor leaves his house very early in the morning to come to my house, to play the keyboard, to worship, and I don't take that sacrifice for granted, honestly. I really honor you. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything. Victor travels with me. He leaves his wife, you know, and he just always opens up the atmosphere. So thank you, Minister Victor. Um, so Pastor Stephanie, send, it, send your details to the groups you know, and let everyone bless them. Or you can put it here, Pastor Stephanie, it's your platform. So whatever you choose to do, please do. Um, let's appreciate these people who serve consistently. They give their time and their energy generously. Praise God. And of course, guys, make sure you bless your Pastor Stephanie, um, who is carrying prayer rain. And ask prayer rain how you can strengthen what they are doing and give to prayer rain also. And people of influence, the, the mother ministry, the mothership that bets all of these expressions. People of influence bets Mantle of Deborah, Prayer Rain, In the Eden, Vows of Incense, This is Jacob, Influence Academy. All of these expressions come from People of Influence Network. And so please bless People of Influence Network um, as the Lord leads you. Praise God. So we talked about the power of names. And then the last thing we talked about this morning was dreams and visions. And how at the point of gates and open, uh, open ways in the realm of the spirit. And how one of the evidence that you're sitting on that open heavens are the visions you have, the dreams you have. You know, and we talked about stewarding your dreams, stewarding your visions. You know, so many people have reached out to me and they've sent me their dreams. And they're like, Peter, help me interpret it. No, I'm not going to help you interpret it. You have to learn how to interpret dreams and visions. So here is my advice to you. Right now, go to Instagram. Look for somebody called Oti Longe. O-T-I. Then his son name is L-O-N-G-E. Um, if you can't find Oti Longe, look for Dreamer's Corner. So he runs courses on dreams and interpretation. He is an amazing, amazing teacher. He's a friend of mine. I trust him. I trust his doctrine. Um, go and pay for a course. Go learn how to interpret dreams, get, uh, get materials, you know, let OT invest in you, you know, ask him, how can you take it forward? How can you take it further? You know, because we shared about how dreams are part of the major signs of the overflow of the spirit in this last days. Now, this is just a very short recap of a journey that we've all gone through for 14 sessions. Um, of course, all of this was interjected with prophetic prayers, was interjected with prophecies, was interjected uh, with word of knowledge, and um, just times of repentance, times of refreshing. And I have received so many testimonies. But I think that one of the greatest testimonies that I have received amongst all of them is the consistency. People consistently say, I feel closer to God again. My intimacy has been restored. My prayer life is back on track. I, I appreciate revelation again. I feel like I want to study the word of the Lord again. The presence of God all around me. These are powerful testimonies and I'm so grateful. We also got testimonies of healings. We got testimony of promotions. We got testimony of um, access granted in terms of proposals, you know, and job offers. All kinds of things have been happening. So I am expecting, uh, yes, thank you, Angista. Go ahead and follow him. Fantastic. Um, I am expecting testimonies of pregnancies. You know, we pray for wombs. We pray for babies. So uh, married women... 
and married men do the needful. Follow up the prayers with what is necessary for you to carry Bele. Hallelujah. The Son of God is already born. A virgin is not going to give birth to another child again. We all have to do what we have to do. So praise God. I believe God that by this time next month, we're going to be testifying of pregnancies. And by the end of the year, and by next year, um, June, I think, we want to have baby dedications. Make sure you invite me to your baby dedication. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Before I bring up Robert Allen, one critical thing I want to say to you all is, remember the purpose of the access. It is not so that you can become the next great you know, person in the world or anything like that. It's all about the kingdom. Um, we are all connected to the purpose of the heavens. Remember we talked about the strength of one man and how you are that one man that God needs. You know, not underestimating the role you play in the destiny of the heavens and the earth. And so when God begins to give you access, it is not because um, the Lord is just trying to, you know, promote you so that you can come and testify of how you got your GWA gone and those things are good. But there's a greater purpose attached to it all. So as you testify of the things happening to you, sit back and ask yourself why. Why is God doing all of this? Remember the scripture we shared this morning about Joseph and how um, God had called for a famine and he had seized the harvest of the land and he sent a man ahead of them and his name was Joseph and how the word of the Lord did not come to pass until the word had tried Joseph. And we talked about how an entire nation's destiny was hanging on the response of one man, one slave, Joseph. And you could be that Joseph that God has sent ahead of a word for a generation. You can be that Joseph that God has set ahead of a season that is about to hit the earth. And so first things first, when you talk about access, is to understand the power of your life, your destiny. I know that sometimes as Christians, we're taught to say, you know, I'm nothing. I'm just a oh, simple man that I am, you know. And sometimes it's actually false humility. It's good to be humble. But I remember I told you guys how God taught me what humility really means. And he says, you see, humility is not acting small or trying to build to accommodate people's insecurities. That is not humility. Humility is saying yes to everything that I say yes to. So in the day that I say, rise up and be a king, you say yes. You don't tell me, oh God, no, you know, the throne is not for me. You're proud. You see that thing that looks like pride, um, that looks like humility is actually pride. Telling God, no, you know, I just want to sit at the back. Why? Humility is really accepting the will of God, accepting the instructions of God per time, and saying yes to whatever the Lord says yes to. You know, so... Um, I, I want us to have a heart of humility, you know, as we receive these words about access. And my prayer for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that this will not just be oh, an experience that you have, but this will become the new culture of your life. That access will be a culture. Amen. That access will be your daily bread. Amen. That access will be normal for you. Amen. That every time you set yourself to plow the land, that God will give you access. Amen. You will always have your harvest in season. Mm -hmm. That before men, you will have favor. Mm -hmm. That everywhere your name is mentioned, that favor will accompany your name. Mm -hmm. But I also pray that this teaching of access will also open up places in your heart. That the places of your emotions, the places of the goodness of your soul that had been sealed up and broken by previous disappointments, that God will heal your heart and grant you, grant you access once again. Amen. Access to the goodness within you. Amen. Access to the kindness, the joy, the peace, the love, the soundness of mind within you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. even as we have said, 
that you have to possess the gates within you before you can possess the gates around you. I pray that this will be your season of mastery where God will begin to show you how to see and understand all that he has placed within you and to master the protocols by which God governs your specific destiny in the name of Jesus. You will not be blunt in the spirit. You will not be dull in the spirit. But I declare that you are a sharp threshing instrument and I declare that the glory of God rises upon you. Therefore, kings will come to the brightness of your rising. There is one point where you receive access for what you need, but there's another place where you become the access that kings require. I pray that you will rise up to this level where you are not only calling for access, but you become the access that a generation needs. You become the access that kings and royals need. You become the access that people need to the throne of God. In the name of Jesus, may your words carry weight. May your thoughts carry power. May God be able to trust you with the destiny of the heavens and the earth. And even as you pray that God gives you seed for your generation, I pray that God will fill the womb on the inside of you with the seed of the future so that you will not only have access to your day, but through your seed, you will have access to futures unknown in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. You guys know that I love you very much and it's been my honor just journeying with you, and I look forward to all that God is going to do um, next month when we do access again. And I kind of feel like access is not just a topic, but access is like a movement that God is raising. You know, teaching a generation how to access the depths of God, raising a generation of people that understand how to access the realm of the spirit. I believe that access is a spiritual movement that God is raising. Hallelujah. So we have not ended. Uh, you know how we do it now, you know, around 9.30 to 10. That's where we're going to leave. So um, I'm just going to call up Rabbi Allen. I, I, I don't know what God has put on his heart, you know, whatever he wants to say. Um, but I'm just going to have Rabbi Allen actually just seal it up for us and pronounce God's blessings over us um, before we leave. Are we still together? Guys, if you are still with me, I, I want to see that comment session here. You know, you still have your pens, you still have your journals, you're ready to learn. Please let me know that you're still ready to learn. Yes, you are still with me. Thank you, Saeed. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Pauline, Lashanda, Panwa, Claire, Elizabeth, Mami, Sheila, Evelyn, Audrey. Okay, everybody, Chizoba. I see you are still ready to learn. So let's go. Please, let's welcome... My teacher, one of my daddies, my friend, Rabbi Alan Allman. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. All right. All right. Is it okay, okay if I just, just like... Great. Great. Well, well, hey, everybody. everybody. It's, um, it's, it's so, so uh, sweet, sweet to be, be back, back. And, and uh, so, so impressive. impressive. And wow. wow. Um, and, and it's, it's amazing, amazing to see so many faces, faces that I remember from, from previous, previous time, time here, here last September, September of 2022. 2022. And, and so, so what I'd like, like to, I was, I was actually, actually planning, planning on teaching on one thing, thing but as uh, PI, PI was leading us, us it dawned on me there might be something that might be very helpful in terms of the conversation of access. Uh, is this okay? Yeah. Okay. So in that case, if you could all open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 4. Verse 7. Genesis 4, 7. And 
I believe, um, well, this is a translation uh, of the verse. Uh, Surely if you do tov, good, and good there is a verb, incidentally, there is uplift. But if you do not do good, sin couches at the door. Its urge is towards you, yet you can be its master. Now, there's so many words in that one little sentence we could focus on. But in terms of thinking about the word access, um, and this may be one of the very earliest points in the whole conversation about thinking about access, the word here that we're going to focus on is the word that's being translated as door. Now, door, yeah. So, now that's actually the first usage of this word, door. Now we're going to turn to a second usage. I mean, we're going to return to it, but I just want you to see like three points in the spectrum, and then we'll kind of drop down into them. Uh, and the second one, we're in Exodus chapter 12, and it's verse 22. And in Exodus 12, verse 22, yeah, please feel free. Yeah, yeah. So take a bunch of hyssop, dis- dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and apply some of the blood that is in the basin to the lintel and the two doorposts, None of you shall go outside the door of his house until morning. Now there is the word door again. It's the exact same word for door as was in Genesis 4 verse 7. But in the first case, the door, well, we'll think about it, was clearly maybe not your home. Here, it clearly is referencing the house, but it's the exact same word. So sin was crouching at the door the first time, but here, it's the blood that's going over the door. Now we're in Exodus 33, There will be many references, but I want you to just have three so you can start to see a trajectory and see how it works, and then we can start to understand what's going on. Um, We're in Exodus 33, verse 8, and of course we're going to return to all of these. Um, Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise and stand, each at the entrance of his tent, and, and... There, it's the word entrance, is that word again. So it was door in the first two cases, and in the third case, it's the word entrance. Okay, but now we're talking about the tent of meeting, which is something completely different from whatever it was that was the door in Exodus 12. All right, so the word in Hebrew that we're talking about is the word Petach. Petach literally means opening. That's why it can be translated door sometimes. Oh, petach. Uh, P E T A C H. Yeah, P E T A C H. We're all making it up on that part of the, you know, what I would call the transliteration of the Hebrew into the. Yeah, so petach is being translated as door or entrance. It literally means opening. And, of course, that's just the very, very beginning of this conversation. But before we dive in, did all that make sense? Stop me if anything. Okay, we're good. All right. So, now... Uh, Go ahead. Uh, No, no, no. Okay. So, we're in verse 7 of Genesis chapter 4. Sin is crouching at 
the door at the opening. Its urge is towards you, yet you can be its master. Well, where's the opening? Ah, your heart. Okay. So, let's, let's track on this. Sin. H had, have you talked to them about sin? No. Ah, okay. So, sin is the word chait. C-H-A-I-T. Chait. <laughs> and it literally means... Well, actually, there's quickly, there's three words for sin in biblical Hebrew, uh, three completely different words. This word for sin simply means to miss the mark. Mm, very good. To miss the mark. So there's a word for sin, which is um, an unconscious rebellion against God, and then there's a third word for sin, which is a deliberate rebellion against God. But this word simply means to miss the mark. Now, the question is, okay, how do I even understand that? So, the word that gets almost tragically <laughs> translated as law, or nomos in Greek, is the word Torah, but Torah literally means teaching. So, and the root there is yud reish hey, for what, but, so Torah sadly gets translated as law. It just doesn't mean that. It literally means teaching, but to teach, so the word yud reish hey which we translate as teaching, literally is to cast an idea or thoughts or actions in space and time towards a target. I'm holding. So Torah is teaching. Is that what you've just described? That's what I'm describing. Now the well, that, so when we hear the word Torah in English, it's a transliteration of the word Torah in Hebrew, which it gets translated into English as teaching. But what we in the West mean by teaching isn't exactly what they in the ancient Middle East. Yeah, so now I'm going to, yeah, why don't we put on the fan, I think that, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, As, and you'll tell me if I'm not talking loud enough in terms of the fan? Okay, better. Oh, yeah, sorry. Got it. <laughs> Silly rabbit. Okay, um, so the root, okay, the root idea of yud reish he is you cast ideas or actions towards a target. So, a teaching is ideas and or actions moving through space and time. So, a teaching is quintessentially got to be a verb. We oftentimes think of a teaching as a noun. Now, what I mean by that is, go at the green light, stop at the red light. Well, once you know how to do it, it's done. That's not what we mean by teaching in Scripture. A teaching is something that is ever-growing, ever-challenging you, moving through your life. So, now, to get at the relationship between teaching as ideas and actions moving through space and time through a t towards a target, and sin, hate, miss the mark, I need some volunteers. Uh, yes, with the glasses. If you could stand up and just step back. Perfect. 
And then if you could uh, stand up pretty much right where you are. Okay, now, if you could stand up right here. Okay, so here's the teaching that I'm setting in motion. I want my five-year-old and two-year-old to love the Lord. Now, this is five years down the turnpike. I could look up, oh, and the target is over there. Everybody got it? So that's the target, loving the Lord. I could look up five years down and think what? Yeah, I, I'm doing okay. I'm doing pretty good. But then you could start to notice that I'm getting a little bit off the mark. But now, if you could move a little more. Yeah, perfect. That, this is 10 years down the turnpike. Now if I look up, I'll really see what? Yes. In other words, the trajectory is taking me not exactly towards the target. Okay. Everybody got it? Yeah. It's real life. Meaning, it's not so easy to notice when you're exactly doing it right and when you're, ex you're kind of missing the mark a little bit. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm teaching my kids to be alcoholics and drug addicts. Well, that's just 180 degrees the wrong way. But that's not what's going on for most of us. Most of us were off the mark somewhere. And that's why teaching is a verb. Incidentally, this verb for sin is a verb. In other words, and incidentally, now it, we've been raising our kids for 10 years, and which of all the things that my wife and I are doing aren't working? Everybody got the challenge? Because I'm not 100% wrong. Maybe I'm 5% wrong here and 7% wrong there. Will I do what? Yes. Will I do the hard work to figure out what needs to be adjusted? So that's why I say, I say to you, teaching in the way that teaching is meant here is a lifelong verb. It's not like, oh, now that I'm 41 years married, my marriage is perfect. <laughs> right? Come on. Uh, no, there's always work to be done. So what we're, tr what we're looking at is not the idea of sin as being 180 degrees wrong but yes yes H learning to think in what I would call sacred spectrums of behavior in other words there's a spectrum I'm I could be way off the mark I could be a hundred percent right but rarely am I that far wrong and rarely am I that far right. I mean that completely correct. That we're all kind of playing somewhere in that spectrum. Okay, thank you guys so much. Now, sin is crouching at the opening. Well, before I go to that, Questions, comments, thoughts on any of this? You're looking like about 10 thoughts. Yeah. So, no, I, I mean, that phrase just stuck in my head when you said sacred spectrum. And I'm just thinking about how sometimes we think about meet, hitting the mark in terms of our now, our current place, our current state, you know, what God expects us to do now and um, getting it right and, you know, prospering in our presence because we are right with the Lord. But we don't think about it in terms of 50 years from now. You know, what is the target of God for my life 50 years from now, 80 years from now, actually a thousand years from now? You know, what is the target of the 
Levi in Abraham, the target of the um, Moses in Joseph. Like, what is that target for my life? And adjusting in today, based on the sacred spectrum of God's expectation from us, you know, and just it just kind of scares me to think that there is actually something called sin that is just being off target. So we think of sin as just murder and strife and adultery, but there is a sin that is the fact that we are not paying the price to find out the accuracy of God's will for our lives. Yeah. Okay, uh, just a million percent, but and I mean that in the following. Well, I mean it in about 10 different ways. I'm only going to mention two. One of them is that you know th that 10 years down the turnpike, well, I'm real busy with my work. My wife's busy with her work. We've got all our social responsibilities. The kids are getting older. They don't necessarily want to listen to everything we're going to say anyway. And we're now going to f make these fine-tune adjustments. Really? Are we going to take the time? Are we going to have the focus to concentrate on the family right now when everything is going on in our work lives? And incidentally, our parents are getting old. And you can all see how that just can be really hard to do. So it's, what I'm trying to get at is this kind of seeing requires an intentionality and focus. And so that's just one quick dimension. And then, if you don't live a life of fine-tune adjustments, it'll be very hard to practice it only on your kids. So, the capacity to make those adjustments as a part of the, just the life practice of your life, uh, it's real easy for me to sit here and say, but it's incredibly it's a, it's a whole different way of living. Because what's easier is, oh, this is really wrong. I've got to stop doing it, because it's obviously wrong. Well, then we'll stop doing it. Let's say the thing is smoking or drinking or something. But let's say, you know, it's something a lot smaller. And then, can I, am I willing to? And if I won't do it for myself, will I really do it for my marriage? If I won't do it for myself and my marriage, will I really do it for our kids? And Okay. Questions, comments, thoughts on all that? Sin is crouching at the opening. Missing the mark is crouching at our heart. What does it mean to say that missing the mark is crouching at our heart? <laughs> so it is normal for us to Going, be in rebellion to God. It's normal for us. So it's the natural disposition of the fallen man to want to do the opposite of what God requires of him. Mm. Okay. I think that's the drop down mega headline of Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. This is normal. Now are you going to be willing to do what? Yes. Are you going to be not normal? And I want to suggest this is one of the pieces that I genuinely believe Jesus meant when he said, in the world, but not of the world. Meaning, no, don't be normal. Don't be like everybody else. Don't just say, hey, I said I want to teach my kids to love God. That's what I said when they were born. I sent them to church. That's it. And then the question is, real, really? Because if that's what worked, everybody who had ever sent their kids to church, be, you know, would all have 
faith-filled kids. And we all know that's not quite the case. Sin is crouching at the door. The door is the heart. Very good. Questions, comments, thoughts so far? Its urge is towards you, yet you can be its master. Okay. This is a really fun one. Okay, well, if you're like a biblical Hebrew nerd. Um, but in any case, the word for master is the word mashal, M-A-S-H-A-L, mashal. It does mean master or mastery. It also can mean to rule over. So w you'll often see this word translated as rule over. But now's where the fun begins. This word which means master, mastery, and rule over also literally means parable or story. Yes, ma'am. Parable or story. Now, if you can get this, you get to adjoin with the Apostle Mark, amongst many others. Master, rule, parable, story. One word. <laughs> okay, so um, sin is crouching at your door, but you can master it. So uh, missing the mark is normal and is set in the heart of every man um, who has fallen, but you can turn it around and make it a story, a different story or through ruling over it, you can craft a story um, of God's will. And I, I kind of feel like I see a connection between, so for example, David and Bathsheba. Today we tell that story, um, but in that story we yet see how he moved from being a victim into mastering God's goodness in the midst of it all. So yeah, that's what's going in my head right okay. now. You're right there. Yeah. Okay, so gang, here it comes. It's real life. I, uh, at this point, uh, our daughter now is 39 and our son is 33. But at this point, um, our daughter is 14 and our son is 10. And we're at that very sweet age when I come home from teaching, they want to play with me. That age would pass very soon. But I would come home from teaching and I would be... Oh, you were there. Okay. <laughs> I would be tired, and I would want what? To rest. In other words, what I'd really like is like 10 or 15 minutes to myself, right? Or maybe a half hour. And, and it was, it was a tension. And then a very dear friend of, I was talking to a very close friend who said, you do know that sh this window is very short. And I went, oh, of course. I'm going to have plenty of time to rest for the rest of my life. Will I grab it while I can? And incidentally, I would come home, I would play with, with them, and after a half hour, they'd be bored with me. Right? You know? And then they'd go off, and then I could rest. But that window got shifted by a different story. And it's the story of another part of the idea of spectrum. We get so trapped in what I'll call the present that we don't see that you're going to look up one day and that 14 and 10 year old are going to be 39 and 34.
Okay, this goes to another, hmm, this is more for the parenting class, but we'll just drop it in here real fast. There is another challenge. You won't really know until they're in their 20s or 30s what you've got. In other words, m many of you probably know our son, Rabbi Noah. If you had met him at eight, I promise you, you would have never projected the person you know. Even if you met him at 12, you can't presume you're failing just because it doesn't look like 30. If I could shift the wiring of one thing in most parents' brain. They're looking at their 12-year-old. They can't see how it's possibly going to turn into anything reasonable at the age of 30. And they feel like they are failing. Most of the time, you're really not. It's just so hard to see at that point in time. So, learn, so there's this thing that you've got to do. And this is why the, I, I'm going here now because you look at five, does the child love God? You look at 10, does the child love God? You can think, oh, I'm way off the mark. And I'm going to suggest probably you're actually not at nearly as far off the mark as you think, but you would have to have, and this is where you don't get to see this nearly enough, raised enough kids over the course of 30 years enough times to know what it looks like when they're five to when they're going to be 30. So, when you bump up against a challenge like that, you have a homework assignment. Your homework assignment is to go find the 30-year-olds who became like that and ask them how they were raised when they were 5 and 10 and 15. Because, you know, in other times in human history, we all lived in sort of incredibly intimate connectiveness, but now we don't. But it's not that the information isn't there. Okay, sin is crouching at the heart. It's urges towards you, yet you can be its master, meaning you can do what? You can overcome it. Ah, louder. You can be the one with the help of God to craft the story. Ah, think about the story you're telling. If you're saying to your kid every day when you come home from work, I'm tired, I don't have time for you. Is that the message you really want to send? So we're all telling stories all the time. Okay, good. Questions, comments? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, questions, comments, thoughts? Okay, let's go on to the second passage. Ah, go ahead. What message is in the following scripture, Genesis 4, 7? If you don't do well, won't you be accepted? But if... Yeah, okay. Ah, okay. Great. In... Do, incidentally, do they know Tove? I have touched on Tove. Okay. So, so just for the people online there, if, um, where it says well in the, in the Hebrew, it's the word Tove, and Tove is uh, the word that's translated as good. Fascinatingly enough, if you don't do Tove, Tove is a verb here. So if you don't do... It's not be, it's not feel. If you don't do the actualization for the potential of life embedded in the creation by God when the creation brings it forth with the seeds of future life in it, th 
then there will be no uplift. It's about what you do. Okay. Yeah, leave it there. Oh, pardon? We didn't hear your definition of Tove. Oh. So, the definition of Tove is the actualization for the potential of life embedded in the creation by God. When the creation brings it forth, with the seeds of future life in it. I'll run it again. The actualization for the potential of life embedded in the creation by God. When the creation brings it forth with the seeds of future life in it. And of course, once you see this, you'll realize, oh, of course, you judge a tree by its fruit. Gachi, please help us with that. So just for context, that's the definition for the word tov, which is the word good. And that's the word we see in Genesis when they say, and God saw that it was good. And that was the first thing for, and let the, let the waters bring forth all kinds of um, fish and this, and God saw that it was good. And so it's the same word that was used when he said, it is not good, it is not tov for man to be alone. So man did not have the actualization for the potential of life embedded in creation, and did not have the ability to bring forth the seeds of the future as long as man was alone. So he said, it is not tov for man to be alone. So that's the word Rabbi Alan is defining. So, and that's the word that was in Genesis 4, 7. If you will do tov, meaning if, you know, to be personal, if I'm a person who spends my life teaching the word, then part of my tov is to raise up people who would teach the word. And the tree will be judged now, I'm the tree in this example, by its fruit. And it's not simply children, well, or it is, but it's all the children, not just a biological child necessarily. But there's a really important puzzle piece in all this, which is, yes, I need to learn how to see when I'm bringing forth Tov, but also, what else do I need to see about myself? What? Okay. Good. When I'm missing the art mark, when my tove is not working. But we're all looking which direction as we answer this question so far. Ourselves. And louder, the target, the future. But we need to do what here? Well, we need to turn back to if I'm standing here before you teaching, I must be somebody else's student. So on that level, I need to see. Ah, and that will ultimately take us back to God. Exactly right. But before I get to God, if I'm standing here, I am somebody else's. There's a tree behind me. I am someone else's fruit. Got it? So, it, you see, there's this way of living life where we kind of get stuck with always looking in only one direction as if somehow it all started with Alan Ullman? No, it doesn't start with any me. There's all those who came bef bef before me, who guided me, that got me to here. And so, and incidentally, this is what I really want to represent to my kids. 
there is a lot of stuff that came before. And there's a lot of stuff that's going to come after. All of this stuff is of the Lord. So, and this is also helpless to escape the, the getting caught too much in the present and not seeing the spectrum of the sacred. Okay, good. Comments, thoughts? <laughs> what is in my, on my mind is, if you don't know the tree you have come from, when you as a fruit, you are becoming a tree, you can't even tell if you're growing right. So we all take our sense of identity from where we have come from. So if you cast off where you have come from, it's very most likely that you will never be able to craft yourself into the perfect picture, into the right picture. So we must all look back before we can effectively look forward. In other words, if we're thinking about trajectories, to see the trajectory starting behind us and moving through us, Where this is um, so beautifully uh, illustrated in the text, well, there's so many passages, but one is uh, Deuteronomy 34. It's such a moment. Uh, so we're in Deuteronomy 34. And um, verse 1, Moses went up from the steps of Moab to Mount Nebo to the summit of Pisgah opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, al Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, and, s then s and then in verse 4, the Lord said to him, this is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Anybody got what just happened there in terms of what we were just talking about? So the Lord is showing him on top of Mount Nebo what? The future. Everybody got Dan, Gilead, all those tribes. But where are the tribes at this moment? Yeah, well, they're on the other side of the Jordan. They haven't crossed into Canaan yet. So everybody got it? All those tribes are not there. But what God is showing him is what he would see if he lived another hundred years. Ah, exactly right. Okay, so what Pastor Bumi just said, uh, for those of you who might not have heard it, is that then God sh tells Abraham, oh, this is what was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is the deep past, about six or seven hundred years ago at this point. That's how you know you're in the river of the Lord. The deep past throwing through you to the sacred future and you inhabit it all at the same time. Yes, ma'am. And I want to suggest, for the most part, we get stuck in what I would call the ephemeral present, meaning next week, last week. Um, whereas if we could see this big picture, what the Lord has. And gang, what I'm trying to get at is the Lord is giving it to Moses to know. And there's a way of living when we can know all this stuff. Okay. Uh, one of the reasons I went here is because we're thinking about access. And this is one of those access points. And in this passage, the access point is what? In this passage. 
in Deuteronomy 34? The eyes where and when? Uh, where is he? On Mount Nebo. Ah, yes. Yes. So, let's go. Nebo is, this is so unfair, but anybody happen to know what the word Nebo means? Uh, uh, so <laughs> fair enough. Nebo means prophecy. So, wait a second. He's on a mountain of prophecy, and he is a prophet, and God is going to give him a prophecy that includes both the future and the past in the present. It's a wise person who knows their mountain. Now, what I mean by that is something very specific. You can go to Nebo. Guess what wasn't there? I put my hand on the Bible for this. What wasn't there when Moses is standing at the bottom of that mountain 3,200 years ago? Yes, ma'am. The moment I say it, it'll make perfect sense. A sign that says, Welcome to Mount of Prophecy, population zero. Right? Everybody got it? You got to know the name of the mountain. There's no, not going to be a sign there that says, oh, because you are this gifting in prayer or you are that gifting in worship. There's going to be a sign that says, welcome to the mount of worship or prayer. You got to know. <laughs> yes, Dorian? How do you know what? Ah... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Is it a specific mountain or can you make it? Okay. So, oh, yeah. So, I'm just, so many people here was teaching, and they ask God the difficult questions. So, for me, I think it also has to do with asking God, where am I? You know, what mountain am I? And how do I, you know, what's, what are you showing me here? And how does it relate with my past? Okay, this is something P.I. is going to teach on one of these days if she hasn't yet, uh, which is the names of mountains in Scripture. Ah, well, you will. <laughs> so, for example, Abraham goes up a mountain named Abraham. Moriah. And Moriah means where God is teacher. Oh, and sure enough, Abraham's going to learn several things that God wants to teach him on that mountain. Then, oh, there's a mountain uh, where the burning bush is. It's called Chorev. Chorev means destruction. But the exact same mountain, Chorev, will be called in Exodus 20, when they receive the Ten Commandments, Sinai. But when Elijah in 1 Kings 19 goes to that exact same mountain, it'll be named Chorev again. So, y when you go to these mountains, they tell you everything you need to know about yourself. And I think that you don't choose the mountain, the mountain chooses you. Yeah. Because they didn't decide, now I'm going to pick Senai. I'm going to pick Horez. The mountain chooses you on the journey of your life. So you have to know at every point in life what mountain you are on. Incidentally, um, mega bravo, mega bravo. The mountain chooses you, and that's, uh, that's God's interacting with us, giving us access points in the most extraordinary ways. Because in Numbers 27, Moses will go up a mountain in the exact same area as Nebo, but the name of the mountain this time will be Aravim. And Aravim means to cross over. So whatever he's doing there that time is not the same thing as when it was destruction, or when it was Sinai, or when it was 
prophecy. Take Moses on a mountain and tell him, oh yeah, see, but you will not enter. It doesn't quite align with the nature of the God to pepper him and just be mean and say, oh yeah, see, you will not enter. But now, when you explain it as a mountain of prophecy, it, it's, it's adding up to God taking Moses on that mountain and showing him these three steps of behind, present, and future wasn't really for Moses. It was for us. Rule number one. If the interpretation you're hearing doesn't correspond to what you know God is, don't worry about God. God's fine. I'd worry about the interpretation. Got it? If everybody keeps telling you God's being mean to Moses, God's being mean to Moses, I'm sorry. You got to reread the passage. And you didn't need to know Nebo to just look at the passage and go, wait a second, they're talking about the tribes. But I know, and you don't need Hebrew. I know the tribes aren't in the promised land yet in Deuteronomy 34. So what could God possibly be showing him? Oh, well, it says God showed him. Well, God's showing him the future. And then the moment God finishes showing him the future, God says, well, I promised this to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, you're showing me how everything I did connects and moves through me into, right. yeah. So what I'm trying to get at is those interpretations tell you something about the interpreter, but they don't tell you much about God, I don't think. But, but you can trust your heart on these things. What I mean is if your heart is telling you that's not God, Exactly. Exactly. Go back, read the text again. What you said, just put it in perspective. Yeah. What you said, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I, and of course, things get agreed upon in, in terms of what I would call the interpretive act of reading certain passages. But just because they've been agreed upon doesn't mean they're necessarily... Okay, good. Questions, comments, thoughts. Did we address your question? Yeah, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so we were gonna look at a second passage of the word opening or door. Now we're in Exodus chapter 12. Yeah. Um, we're in Exodus chapter 12, verse 22, and we're going to be looking at the next verse, time, a next time, this word petach, opening, gets translated as door. The first time it was pretty clearly talking about the heart of Cain. But now let's look at it here. And remember, we're thinking about access points and we're thinking about those ways that allow us to enter but also and if I can enter, I can also be entered. So sin is, yeah. So one of the things we need to think about in access points is not only is this a point of entry, but also, yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. Verse 22, take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, 
and apply some of that blood that is in the basin to the lintel and the two doorposts. None of you shall go outside the door of his house until morning. But instead of door, it actually says opening. Now, let's just remind ourselves. When we do go out, where are we going out to? Trying to. Yes. We're, well, we're leaving slavery. We're leaving Egypt. We're leaving the narrow place. So this is literally the access point to future, promised land, rest. Hmm. This is the access point to what that you haven't said yet? Pardon? Freedom? Promise? I'm really surprised. Let's remind ourselves. We are in what holiday? Passover. Ergo, and we're talking about blood. Ah! <laughs> Bravo! In Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, Moses will say to the Israelites, see the salvation. Only the third time the word Yeshua has been used in all of Scripture. See the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. And, the wa and in this salvation... The waters will part. They will no longer be in Egypt. They will be in the wilderness. One of the very most important teachings about salvation, although there are many, so I don't put this as, I'm just saying like in the top 20, I didn't do it myself. I didn't part the waters, right? No, he parted the waters. The question was, would I walk through? Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes, and I'm sure we've all seen this, or if you don't know you've seen it, once you think about it, you'll realize you probably have. People get to the unparted waters, the waters part, but they're too scared to cross. And then they don't cross. But it's not that the waters didn't get parted for them. Okay, so. The opening of your house. So now what are we talking about the opening is? Mm hmm? Mind. Mind and family. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> this is about what? It's one of the hardest things to get to, but once you get there, it's, how could it be anything else? Yeah. No, we, I asked, what is this opening? And the answers were mind and family. And then you just said, putting the blood on the opening of the door. What have you done? What? Sure 
Ah, for whom? Oh, uh, okay. Well, done. Okay, <laughs> now just say it much louder. You've made Yeshua your door for the sake of the sacred future. Wherever two or more of us are gathered in his name, what would it even mean if I sit around spending all my life teaching and I have no heirs? Everybody got it? What would it mean? What would I have even done? You judge a tree by its fruit. So, of course, we're trying to bring our family out. And the heartbreak is when we can't get our family to join us. And we still have to go, but we all know how hard that is. So, you know, why are we doing this? Meaning, why are we here right now doing this activity? Is it only to make me smarter? No, of course not. What is the sacred story we're telling ourselves? Well, I'm trying to re-engage with what I consider to be the sacred story and really understand it in real life 2023. Except for if I really understand it in real life 2023, I'm thinking. Yeah. So it's a door to our house. But guess whose house it is? You already know, but I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The first commandment, Exodus 20, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Meaning I was living in Pharaoh's house. I left that house was saved, and now I live in God's house. So the opening here was first to our heart, but then it's to what house we inhabit. Is it really God's house? And what does it mean to make sure that it is God's house? And then the third passage in Exodus 33, we were talking about the opening of the tent of meeting. And of course, the tent of meeting is the place you go to meet with God. So it started with my heart, moved into my house, but my house leading me to being able to inhabit God's house. And to be able to inhabit God's house with my family. Okay, well, questions, comments, thoughts? Okay, um, so from our online people, any comment? or question or thought, because uh, we are drawing to the end. You know, I'm gonna ask Rabbi Alan to pronounce a blessing over us. And I think that 
this is my comment. I think that um, just taking us back to what the door or what the opening looks like, I think it's really powerful to begin from the point of our hearts. I feel like, because I, I have been saying that the first um, access is the access within you, guarding the access ways within you before the access around you. And to see that the first time it is used is God talking to Cain. So the first time door opening access is used, God is referring to the heart. You know, I think that is really, really powerful. And we see how Cain literally lost, I, I think first level of access they lost was the garden. And the next level of access is what he could have had with God. And he lost that access, you know, because he couldn't steward the access in his heart, you know. And then we see how he is living out this completely different life that has nothing to do with God's will or what God would have wanted and how losing the access in the heart doesn't mean your life is cut short but you can be living a life that has missed the mark completely you know so for me I think that is really profound because sometimes we can say things like oh I thought they thought I wouldn't make it but look at me now but just because you've made it in men's definition of success and progress doesn't mean you have not missed the mark with God. So for us, speak, say, speaking about access is not just, oh, success, you know, blown out of context. The context to all of our lives is the will of God. That is our context. So that's the first access we need to guard. And recognizing that stewarding that access way, we are literally crafting a story that generations will tell about who God is. You know, so it's our responsibility to steer what that access effectively, that place of our hearts. But I also like what God said about you can rule over it. So just because you are being attacked or just because your access is being, there's a barrage of hell against your heart, doesn't mean you have to give in to it. He says you can. So there's always a choice to respond to your doorway in a godly manner or in, with sin. So there's a choice. You can. You have the capacity. So I think one of the principles here about access is seeking for that inner strength and grace from God to be able to do as he pleases, no matter how hard it is for you, because you're paying a greater price if you don't. And your point is, I think, so profound, and it corresponds to you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And you can pretty much track those four. Yes. And in other words, that passage is giving you the key to the kingdom in terms of this question of access, focus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and then just opening the door for generations to come in and saying that this access I'm seeking for, Lord, is not just access for myself, but access, access for my children, my children's children, you know. And even if it means that all I get to partake of is to just be on the mount of prophecy concerning the future, if that's all I need to do, then I'm fine. But as long as I live a life that becomes an open door for generations, that's the most important thing. And I think that that's so powerful. And for me, that just brings the whole teaching we've done back into the foundation, which is God. It's, it's all about God and the will of God. Well, and exactly. What's my, one of my personal prayers is that my students, my kids, the younger people around me are seeing me going up the mountain the mountain of teaching. Not that that's their mountain, but that they know there is a mountain. And what it means for them to witness that, because in their time they will have a time and it'll be their turn to go up the mountain. What's the mountain going to be for them? So, in other words, not everybody's a prophet. 
you know, there's the fivefold. You know, so just to think about the fivefold as an example in Ephesians 4, 10 and 11. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, guys online, are you there? <laughs> so we're about to end. It's been um, an amazing time of just sitting with the word of the Lord and learning what it means to have access and what it means to become access in itself you know and the power of torah the power of teaching you know in actually helping you hit the target in helping you create adjustments and i think that those are that's what this week has been about the power of teaching and teaching just helping us make the necessary adjustments in our lives so that we don't miss the mark you know, and my prayer for all of us is that none of us will miss the mark. You know, even as we have um, been diligent in learning and we have been diligent in just, you know, sitting before God and asking the Lord, you know, what is your will for our lives? What will you have us do as a people? How can we um, go through this um, seven days, 14 sessions? You know, I pray that God will see your sacrifice. Not that our sacrifice is ever enough. It cannot compare to what Jesus has done. Um, but we sacrifice on the premise of his sacrifice. So I pray that God will accept it. And I pray that um, God will make us very sensitive to always know what mountain we are on. Um, because the mountain you don't possess, you cannot hand over to another generation. And our children need our mountains. Our mountains will become our children's strongholds. It will become the stronghold for another generation. It will become the point of access for them when they go to war against their enemies. So we need to possess our mountains. So it is important at every point in time that you are able to define what mountain you are on. So where is your life at right now? What is the access God is giving to you? Is it just the access of prophecy? Or is it the access of now, Joshua, you go and take the land. So for Moses, his own was see the land. Joshua, his own is take the land. So you have to know what mountain you are at. And your mountains define you ultimately. And so may God help us to not despise our mountains. May God help us to not compare our mountains with our brother's mountain. May God help us to know that every time there is a challenge at our door, it is an opportunity opportunity for us to partner with him to craft the story of the generation of the heavens i pray that god gives you the capacity to see this to know this to understand that you are the part of the big picture that the heavens will tell about god someday when the books are open in eternity and they speak about yeshua they speak about elohim and his deeds on earth you are going to be part of that story of god about the things that he said, the covenants that he made, the people that he raised. I pray that the oppression of this world will not get to you so much so that you no longer see yourself as relevant in the story of the heavens. But I pray that God will give your heart a certain kind of grandness that comes only by knowing that you are his and he is yours. It is our season to access and so you will possess your gates. You will possess your doors. You will possess the entryways of your life and your families. You will possess your sectors. You will possess your calling and your ministry. You will possess every single thing that the Lord has laid down for you in the name of Jesus. And by the blood of Jesus, we will cross over into everything that God has apportioned for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask Rabbi Alan um, I know there are many blessings you know um, but I don't know which one you believe fits into where we are at so you can speak it, sing it, recite it psalm it, however over us and for those online you are absolutely a part of what um, God is releasing here alright Please rise. And 
What I'd like to do is have everybody move in as close as possible so that we're all kind of really one in this moment. And I'm about to chant with a very ancient chant, the priestly blessing. It was given in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And it's about the Israelites crossing over into the promised land. And it's about knowing that the kingdom of heaven on earth is nigh. It is here for us. And we are learning all about the access points to it. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha The Lord bless you and keep you. Yair Adonai panave lecha Yehuneka the light of God's face upon you and grace you. Ye Adonai Panave Lecha Vayasem Lecha. Shalom. God's face lifted up to your face Amen. and place upon you God's shalom. Amen. Hallelujah, guys. Amen, 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 amen. So God bless you all. Oh, communion. <gasps> I didn't bring my communion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Please bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Oh, take the challenge, Rabbi Alan. Sit down, please. Yes, how could I forget? I love you guys. You're so diligent. You're like, P.I. Even if it's the last day, we must have communion. <laughs> oh, Father, we thank you. We bless you. Um, yeah, I love that blessing. I wish I could learn, learn it, you know, and pronounce it over God's people. Yeah. So you need to know how to hold a, a note to be able to do it. Abi? If it's, if it's me when I sing it. limiting your assets so take it out take it down this is my temple this is my house you know there's no place for any of these things to be inside so, yes, that's oh absolutely I, I don't I don't think you hear that blessing and feel like oh yeah hey amen hallelujah you you can tell that something is going on and I love how you interpret it as opposed to say God causes face to shine upon you but you say God's face upon your face oh i think that's really powerful <laughs> i think we can do a whole class on does the priestly blessing yeah just the priestly blessing we do a whole class on that i think it's it's really powerful yeah so we have our communion do you have your communion somebody is asking for the account details 
please let's allow the people bless the house so you can put up the details so that they can bless the house hallelujah amen father we thank you and we give you praise we thank you lord jesus for the bread and for the wine we thank you father because <laughs> is he already eating his communion there's a child here that has finished the communion already <laughs> don't worry you know God is pleased with you Jesus is pleased <laughs> so father we just thank you for everything you've done for us um, we thank you for access we thank you for revelation we thank you for grace we thank you for teaching we thank you for prayer we thank you for good health and we thank you for good life we thank you for doing this 14 sessions and we didn't fall ill we didn't break down rather we just felt grace and grace and grace with each day we thank you for hunger because blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled for if we were not hungry we would not have showed up every day so thank you that you put a hunger on the inside of us and thank you lord that you supplied bread and wine for the journey thank you father for bringing rabbi allen oh god thank you father for just bringing him to teach us god the foundations of access father we thank you for kachi holding the camera waking up day and night to record to, to make sure that everybody can see and everybody can partake to transmit the information thank you for our dear brother Victor who was coming from his home every day to lead us in worship. Father, thank you for Pastor Stephanie leading the team, leading the charge, galvanizing everybody, putting up messages on groups. Father, we thank you for the prayer reign team, all the administrators, Sister Phyllis, everybody working together, you know, just making sure, Father, that every group, every person received the information. Thank you for the scribes, Lord Jesus, that have been writing my notes and putting Putting together everything we have said every day. Thank you for the lady on the group, Adiola, who is always putting up the scriptures and the revised um, revision of everything that we teach. Father, we thank you for Osemu Diame, who, who came and you know lit up the room and he just became a point of joy for all of us. Father, we thank you for the people that make me laugh when I teach. I thank you for the people that remind me to take communion. I thank you for the ones that help me when I forget a word thank you holy spirit thank you for the leaders of people of influence people who are diligent giving themselves consistently to the work of ministry always seeking to promote god's work thank you thank you for all the people who give their money to this ministry and who sow seeds so that we can pay salaries we can pay rent we can do the mission trips we can give to the poor father i thank you for their lives oh god our partners financial partners technical partners thank you thank you for our leaders across the world oh god father thank you for the leaders of mantle of deborah in the different nations and all the teams lord we are grateful thank you for my family jesus thank you for giving me a husband who makes room for me to do the work of god thank you holy spirit for the encouragement i get from my children thank you because my baby said to me mommy is it time for your meeting when you are done can you come sit with us can you come lie with us for just for 10 minutes thank you that i have understanding children thank you father for my staff my domestic workers who all help to enable this process of service thank you lord jesus and father i want to thank you for my life i want to thank you jesus that after everything father i am still standing here i want to thank you lord that you have put in my heart a desire for service to pour into your people to give to your people i want to thank you lord because for the days when the enemy came for my heart and somehow by grace i was able to master it when sin was crouching at my door thank you father that i was able to tell a different story lord i am grateful and father we just declare that this month of september is yours indeed it is our season of jubilee it is our season of liberation 
It is our season, oh God, of debts forgiven. It is our season of entering into our promises in the name of Jesus. As we take this communion, we declare that everything you have given to us, we will keep. We will not lose all the blessings you have poured out upon us in Jesus' name. Father, even as we've been going through the sessions and talking about our children, Father, we declare that everything we have received on this altar is for our children and our children's children. In the name of Jesus, thank you for access. You are the door, our master. And so even though we close the teaching sessions, we don't close the door. Stay open over us, oh God. And give us the grace to master everything you have taught us in these 14 sessions. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may eat the bread and drink the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, we are praying for 36 hours nonstop tomorrow. We will start at 12 a.m., which is in um, just two hours. We will begin praying. From 12 a.m. to 9. Pastor Stephanie, is that information correct? Yes, in two hours, we begin the prayer rally. We're calling it Friday Fire. It's our prayer rally where we pray nonstop. So we will start at 12 a.m. today, and we're going to end at... Pastor Stephanie, when are we ending? Is it 12 noon on Saturday? Fantastic. And then we will end at 12 noon on Saturday. They are going to be soldiers that Pastor Stephanie has trained and has raised. She has fire bearers. That is the intercessory group that Pastor Stephanie has trained. Fire bearers are intercessors. So you're going to have fire bearers standing at the gate of every hour. And they will take all the teachings, all the things that we have learned, and we're going to be distilling them in prayer. I will be joining them. So fire bearers, please get ready. Any hour you see I've entered the room and you hear Mele Kanda Brahada, thank you, Jesus. Just give me chance, okay? Give me chance to pass. You know, so I will be entering and interjecting um, at different hours just to follow. I want to be this 36 hours. My phone will be charged for 36 hours. I have one ear pod in my ear throughout. If any hour enters and I'm just hearing somebody say Mare Mare Mare, Mare Mare Mare, Mare Mare Mare. I'll call Pastor Stephanie, please. Tell that person to pray. You understand? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm going to be in all the 36 hours. And I know that when we are done, we will be done. Hallelujah. We will know by 12 noon on Saturday that something has happened. Gates have opened. Doors have been pushed down for our sake. You know, so I congratulate you all for making this journey. And I remind you that we will begin access to where we will take particular gates in the month of um, October. I don't know where the Lord will be by then. I don't know what the Lord will say. It's a journey in the spirit. But if he permits, we will continue with access. If he doesn't, then you get to read it in the book. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So um, if we do begin with access in October, then the first class we will take is the, the, the gate of economies. Um, because I believe that wealth is needed. Remember, the gospel is free, but the means to doing the gospel is actually not free. Everything is paid for. Um, and on that note, I want to encourage you all to partner with people of influence. Um, Pastor Stephanie is going to put up the details, um, or Pastor Linda. Um, partner with people of influence. There's a lot we're doing in this season. Rabbi Alan is around. Um, there's Uganda, there's Kenya, there's London. You know, here in the office, we have a, a building, we have staff, we have team. 
And like I said, we're not a Sunday church, so most times people don't remember to give tithes and offering, but some people do. So to those who give their tithes and offering to POI, I say God bless you. God bless you indeed, because you make it possible for us to keep running as a ministry. If you don't have a church and you don't, you don't know where to give your seed to, you can always bring it here to People of Influence Network. And if you feel this is your church, I want to encourage you to keep giving, or you just want to sow a seed, please go ahead and give to the ministry so that the work of God can be done with ease. I don't want to have to cancel things that are in God's heart simply because I can't personally afford it. You know, there are people, strong men like you that God has placed in my life that should be able to carry the vision. Um, so don't make it hard for us to do God's work. Make it easy so that we can keep doing the work of the Lord. Um, we, I mean, I've taught you about seed, I've taught you about sacrifice, I've taught you about access. So I don't think I need to say anything more, you already know. Um, and also remember the course, the shift, making successful transitions. I'm teaching that in October and I'm inviting you to join me. Go to Isi Benedicta Institute to, 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 to get access to the course, the shift. Um, we're constantly making transitions, constantly on different mountains. So part of what you will learn at the course is to know what mountain you are on and how to master your mountain. Um, also my book, From Here to There, you can get it on Amazon. Please go ahead, go to Amazon and buy the book from here to there. It teaches you how to transition in life. And then in the course, I teach you a whole curriculum, giving you materials that you need to make your transitions in life. God bless you guys. I am going to miss you all. Um, but we, we have to know when to shift. Yeah. A victory song. Oh, the dream. I, ne I never taught Victor the song. No, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you learn it on that time. When we release the song first, you'll get it on iTunes. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I love you. Go to bed. Or stay awake to 12 a.m. To, to start the intercession. God bless you. God bless you. It has been a joy making this journey with you. I love you too, Elsa. I love you too. I love you too. God bless you all. Thank you for joining with us. All right. Take care. Bye. See you during the prayer rally. Bye, guys. <laughs>